Bay Ridge. Welcome back to another edition of After Hours. We've been off for a few months here, but we are back. And as you can see, I'm kind of in our new and improved uh, area where we're making the videos. Uh, this week, I wanted to talk a little bit about from the teaching on Sunday, a question that came up from several people, which is, what about the issue of boundaries in relationships? What do you do if you're in a relationship with somebody who's kind of a toxic person? They, they don't accept things. The relationship itself is not good or they won't respond in it. And this arose because, of course, as we were looking at the story of David and Absalom, I was pointing out that David made the mistake of when he brought Absalom back, he kind of restored him halfway. And you remember he told Absalom, you can come back, but you can't see my face. You stay down the hill. You stay away. And I was pointing out that God does not do that with us, that the Lord turns his face towards us and he has a full and open relationship and challenging us to think about that in our own relationships. But that brought up that question of boundaries then for some people where they said, well, but what do I do if I've been in a relationship where the person has violated trust, they have broken the relationship, they've done things, how do I respond then? Well, two things that I would want to say. First off is to remember the issue of forgiveness and consequences. As we've seen in the story of David as we've gone along, you remember when he sinned with Bathsheba and he confessed that sin, the Lord spoke immediately and said, your sin is forgiven, it's been removed and taken away, uh, you're not going to die, David. But there are going to be these consequences that are going to spin out in your sin. You're going to see the effects of this in your relationship, in your family. And so we learn from that, that even when God forgives us, there can still be consequences for our sin, for our past behavior. But what God does not do with David is uh, fail to restore the relationship. Tell David, you are no longer allowed. You can't come and worship me anymore. Keeping him at some kind of a distance. Uh, while there are consequences, the relationship itself is restored to its full status. And so that's the first thing to remember, that sometimes someone's past actions may warrant continuing ongoing consequences in the relationship. And the, the verse that I think is most important for us to think through, and this comes from Romans chapter 12, and if you look around verses 17 to 21, in particular verse 18 and verse 21, the Apostle Paul writes and uh, gives us instruction in our relationships, and he says, If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. And then in verse 21, he tells us, uh, Don't be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And we're not to repay evil for evil, but rather to overcome it with good. And so Paul points out something there. He says that the purpose of our relationship, the goal, the desire, is shalom is peace in our relationships. However, he says that that's what your goal, but if it's possible, because some people you cannot live in a shalom relationship with, they simply will not allow it. And he says, if it's possible, as far as it depends on you, there are things that we can do and we can try to overcome evil with good, but some people will not accept a relationship that is healthy. And in such a case, we're not rejecting the person. We're in fact not pushing them away. We are simply saying, I'm not going to do unrighteous or unhealthy things for this relationship. I want relationship with you. I want to be restored in this. But in fact, if you won't have a relationship under those healthy, godly terms, then actually it's the other person who is rejecting the relationship. What we continue to do no matter what is to try and overcome evil with good, doing what we can do if it's possible as far as it depends on us. But if in the end a person will not accept that, then the relationship itself can't go on. Some people really only want relationship to use other people. They're looking for me to fill a void that really only Christ can fill. And in such cases, I have to simply say, I accept you, I love you, I, I have my face turned towards you as it were, but I will not do these things that you're asking me to do. I can't fulfill that, I can't be that person. And if the person really wants relationship, they'll continue to pursue it. If all they're really wanting is for you to meet some other need or they're wanting to use you in some way or they're wanting you to be their own personal Jesus, then they're not going to accept those boundaries and that's okay. We've done what is possible and what depends on us. And so 
Uh, I just hope this will be helpful and encouraging to you to think through as you look at your own relationships so that we can build godly relationships that are glorifying to God and good for us and promote the gospel. I hope you have a great week. I look forward to seeing everybody as we worship again this together this Sunday. God bless.